today and those of you who are joining us on our live stream on Facebook. We've got some announcements for you today. So um, I'm going to start off by reminding everyone every Wednesday on Facebook live stream, uh, we do have from the pastor study uh, at 7 o'clock. So we hope you will join us uh, there for our inspirational message from Pastor Mark. Um, also, the gathering will be taking place this Friday, June 4th. Uh, for those of you who are interested, uh, we hope you will join us. We do have intercessory prayer that meets in Agape Room at 6 p.m. And then we all get together in, uh, here in the sanctuary for uh, praise and worship and communion. Uh, as for now, our missions, um, we have uh, from Pastor Mark, uh, from the they will be here next Sunday, and uh, we will be uh, celebrating church anniversary, and we'll be having hot dogs outside, right? Very good. All right, weather permitting. Right. <laughs> and uh, all right, uh, for Barb's heart, uh, we've got quite a bit of activity going on. Uh, with Monte uh, Cora Pavana and uh, Mike and Ginger Green. Uh, she's being, she's, oh boy, here we go. The system's acting up again. Uh, we do have a couple announcements which aren't showing up, unfortunately. First is uh, they have a staff member, Alexa, that they're featuring. It's, it's a glitch in the system, Steve. It, it, we fixed it and it happened again. Uh, and then also, uh, they are, they spent uh, this past week repairing the school, and uh, so uh, we did have some pictures of uh, that school uh, repair, and uh, these are both available on Ginger's blog, so um, check it out, that's on our website. Uh, the next thing we'd like to go to is uh, uh, David's heart. Hopefully David's heart's going to show up. Okay, good. David's heart's showing up. And um, uh, in Pakistan, uh, we have, uh, there's Jumaila and Sahil. And so last Sunday, they did uh, Pentecost Sunday, and they celebrated the picture on the left there is a... Um, Spirit, and uh, they did feed the children uh, after that. So, with that, it's time for praise and worship. As always, we thank you very much for your support of, of our missions and all of our outreach activities. And so, if you want to stand, uh, you can join us in praise and worship this morning. Thank you. 
Today, in honor of Memorial Day and all of those that have given their lives for us to be free in America, we're going to have Sergeant, First Sergeant Matt Smith present the flag and we'll stand for the national anthem to be sung. Be thy 
how strong and very courageous that they observe to do according to all the law which Moses Turn not from the left or to the right, that thou mayest prosper in everything that you do. But in verse 2, Moses, God is telling Moses is now dead, and he's speaking to Joshua, and he says, Unto this people and unto the land which I do give them. And I really believe that. You just look at the parallel between Israel and America. And I truly believe that around the world, their nations are blessed or not, according to what God they have. The closer to God of the Scriptures, the more blessed they are, all the way back through history. And Franklin Roosevelt said, Freedom cannot be bestowed, it must be achieved. And so what I want you to see today is the fiber that's in America because of God being in America. And so... God says, go into the new land. It's going to cost you battles, starting with Jericho and the constant war that has been ever since. But Israel, if you're looking back through their history, fought the Egyptians, the Philistines, the Amorites, the Jebusites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, Syria, England, all before becoming a nation in 1948. And since then... They have fought eight major wars. And God says, I've given you the land, and I will protect that land from all of your enemies. But only obey the law, otherwise keep the word of God. And then if you look at America, which is a Christian nation, do not listen to the news media. This is a Christian nation still, and I can prove it, because we have the same God the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, now speaking through his son, Jesus Christ, and of the present 117th Congress that met, nine out of ten of the Congress people profess to be Christians. That's 88.1% of our Congress says that they're Christians. That is a cross-cut of America because America voted them into office. Hence, we are a Christian nation and we will always remain one. So America has fought from the American Revolution till now, 12 major wars. God said, inherit the land, obey the word of God, and I'll bless you. And America's been blessed because of God giving us this land. I know all the debates and the arguments God gave us America, and America is still a Christian nation. In Lamentations chapter 3, we're told, it is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because of His compassion, they fail not. They are new every morning. Great is Thy faithfulness. Great is Thy faithfulness, O God. Great is Thy faithfulness to America, in spite of all. And throughout the years, I've heard things, again, the news media. Why does the world hate America? People, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie. The world envies America. That's why they all are trying to get into America. It is blessed by God. You don't see people fleeing America to go to the other countries. The other countries are fleeing America. They come for education, they come for work, they come for for a lifestyle that they want. Out of all these other countries, God has blessed America. Now, this Memorial Day quotes in honor of our nation's fallen soldiers. I want you to listen to some, and by the way, if you want them, I can print them all out for you. I believe with all my heart that Standing up for America means standing up for God, who has also blessed our land, Ronald Reagan. Matt, when you're holding that flag, I was thinking, those that stand up for God stand up for America. That flag represents what God has given us in America. This nation will remember, remain the land of the free only so long as it is the home of the brave. 
Elmer Davis. No man is entitled to the blessing of freedom unless he be vigilant in the preservation, General Douglas MacArthur. It doesn't take a hero to order men into battle. It takes a hero to be one of those men who goes into battle, Norman Schwarzkopf. Over all our happy country, over all our nation spread, is a band of noble heroes, is an army of the dead, Carlton. It is foolish and wrong to mourn the men who died. Rather, we should thank God such men lived, George Patton. Never was so much owed by so many few, Winston Churchill. Those who have long enjoyed such privileges as we enjoy forget in time that men have died to win them, Franklin Roosevelt. This, then, is the state of our union, few and restless, growing and full of hope, so it was in the beginning, and so it shall always be, while God is willing and we are strong enough to keep the faith, Lyndon B. Johnson. Teddy Roosevelt once said, if you are anything slash American, then you are not an American at all. You're not an Italian-American, an African-American, an Irish-American. Listen, you are not a Republican-American, a Democrat-American. You are an American. I want you to see how that subtly separates by having slash American. You are an American. And the same is with Christianity. You are not a Catholic Christian. You're not a Protestant Christian, a Charismatic Christian, a Pentecostal Christian. You are a Christian. And so stop and think about that, American, Christian. This past week I read a book, X Troop. It's the secret Jewish commandos of World War II. And Churchill knew that he needed some commandos that could go back into Germany and speak their language and know their customs and uh, be commandos and spies. And, and, but they needed to understand what they were entering into. And so the answer was German Jews in exile, people that were German and from Germany that were being persecuted and thrown out. They had lost their nation. They had lost their families. They had lost their income. They had lost their home. They lost everything was taken from them, and millions of them were being killed. Their own families of the commandos were being killed, and they knew where they were being killed and murdered. So they had a vendetta. They wanted to conquer the Nazis and free their country. And so their life experience is told and from about a dozen of them. And you feel as you get, you, you think you know them by the end of the book. And then later in life, because she interviewed actually two that were still alive, and then families of the others, and as they told their stories to their offspring, they were reinforcing, now listen to this, intergenerational trauma caused by the Holocaust. And people, the Holocaust is horrific. Uh, is horrific. They still have films they're not going to allow you to see because they don't want the American psychic shocked even this far some 50 years later, some 75 years later. And so they're still allowing you to see a little glimpse and every couple of years a little glimpse. When I was 15, I went through Dachau and saw pictures and they had Quonset huts where they'd killed all of these people and picture after pictures because the Germans were so uh, dedicated in keeping records. And, and I got sick as a 15-year-old. It was like I, I could not, you can't make up what they did to people. And these were the Jewish commandos that were going to go in and conquer those people. But as they told their stories later, it was an intergenerational trauma that they were causing their children and their children's children to experience. And 
when they realize that they were traumatizing their families, you can either do that, and if, if, because of the Holocaust, I understand that. But last week we talked about Eddie, who went through all the concentration camps, lost everybody in his family, was tortured on and on and on, and he decided and wrote the book, The Happiest Man on Earth. And so you can traumatize your family, or you can be the happiest person on earth. The choice is yours. Just reading about the Jewish Holocaust. And then as I thought about that, I thought about how people identify and are identified. For example, how they think or feel. When the Jewish people are identified as Jewish, they think persecution. The African American, when they think about their nationality, they're taught to think slavery. The American Indian, when they're taught about their history, they're taught to think slaughter. Or the Chinese American, when they talk to think they're, about their family, they're taught to think isolation. Or the European family, they're taught to win at all costs. And if you stop and think about that, how much of that is biblical and how much of it is not biblical? But it's true, it's a reality. But these families realize, the two that she was speaking to, is that they are traumatizing their children. They're traumatizing their grandchildren. And there are three generations. They realize they were setting mindsets with them that they couldn't get out of. And so they became defensive and they become isolated and they become threatened because of what their grandfather and their father, what they were told. And so this was part of their family inheritance. And then I thought about humanity's intergenerational trauma is sin. And we're told about that over and over, depending on what kind of pastor or minister or priest, rabbi that you speak to. And what have you been taught? What is your perception of your intergenerational experience. What do you think about your father, your grandparents, your great-grandparents? What, what, what are you born with, but also what are you developed as, as, from an infant up to believe who you are and what you've received? See, it's all about belief. It's what you tell yourself and what you tell others. And... The result is how you live. Melissa was talking about this morning in Sunday school. Do you love all the time? Are you taught to love? Or are you taught to be defensive? My wife was taught from a child, don't forgive, get even. Now what an ugly way to teach your children. But that's the way she was taught. Her mother said, don't, don't, don't forgive, get even. <laughs> that's ugly. And when that gets in you, it's like, well, that's the way I was taught. Those are the stories I was told. How about your generational stories? Are they victorious or are they defeated? Are, are you a stand-up type person or are you a sit-down type person? Are you an overcomer or are you a runner? See, it's intergenerational. What have you been taught? The intergenerational trauma or intergenerational freedom, and by the way, I have a message coming on that title next week because I've got that this morning while we're in chapel praying. Uh, instead of intergenerational trauma or intergenerational freedom, I'm going to talk about intergenerational transformation. What's the worst thing that's ever happened to you? That's trauma. And some of us have multiple traumas. And it's like, doesn't it ever stop? Trauma. But how are you handling that trauma? Is it, has it defeated you? Or is it transformed you? And I'll be speaking about that next week. Next week, my wife, my first wife being killed was the worst thing that ever happened to me. That became the best thing that ever happened to me. What's the worst thing that's ever happened to you? And how have you let God transform that with understanding so it becomes the best thing? I was reading one of the books this week, and it told about your worst situation can become your best. 
And then also the flip side was, and your best situation experience can become your worst. If your worst experience you learn by and make it your best, or if your best experience hinders you from viewing things with new acceptance, and, and, and so there's that balance there. Well, how do you see your life that God has made you? We look in 2 Corinthians 3. Intergenerational trauma and the, or the intergenerational freedom. Now, now think about this in 2 Corinthians. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we, all of us, doesn't matter what background, and we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. And so when we look at that, then we're not Jewish, African, American, Chinese, European. We're not, we're, we're not those. We're the body of Jesus Christ, one body, one God, one Savior, Jesus Christ. And the more we can put off these subtitles that people have given us with all the issues that come with that, and the more likeness of God we see ourselves, then the more freedom we have and the more overcoming we have. And so you can look back and you say, uh, you know, when uh, I have people challenge me this, you know, periodically, and they'll say things like, well, Christians, you know, they went through and killed so many people in the Holy Land. And wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's that got to do with Jesus? That's people. And, and you say, well, what about the politicians? What about the Republicans? What about the Democrats? What about this? What, what's that got to do with your life in Jesus Christ right now? And so our answer should always be a reflection. What does it say? It says, with unveiled faces, that's us, we're looking in the mirror at ourselves, we all reflect the glory of God. When you look in the mirror, how much reflection of the glory of God do you get? I have a picture that my stepson sent me, and I'm on the pulpit, and uh, and, and, I'm, and, and my hand is like this, and I'm getting ready to, to use the, you know, uh, and, and I know it's a reflection in the camera itself, but around my hand was this glow. And I thought, whoa, if that glow had been over my head, that would have been quite a message. But, but looking at the picture, and I know it was a picture camera thing, but I thought, what about the glory of God? What about the glory of God being sent to you? What about the glory of God? What about the glory of God in your face when you look in the mirror? When you look at yourself, who do you see? Do you see what your father's taught you, your mother's taught you, your grandparents, the world has taught you? Now we need to know that. We need, all of that has to do with grounding. But we also need to sort out what is not of God. How about if somebody calls you a quitter? Do you see yourself as a quit? You know, so many times in our lives, we remember, what, what is it statistically? And I don't know if it's still true. They say for one negative comment made to you, it takes 12 more positives to build you back up to even, not to be ahead, just to be even where you were. Now, how many of you have received 12 good compliments about you the whole year? See, you remember that one negative. And when does that one negative come? Probably at your worst emotional state or when you're vulnerable. But that goes in you. Words, they hurt. And so many times people will have a parent shout at them and call them some name and whoa, that stays there. And they can be good, nice Christians. They can come later and say, you know, I called you a name. You know, you're talking to your child, and I shouldn't have said that. Will you forgive me? And the child's raised in Jesus, and so they will say, of course, I forgive you because the child loves the parent, and the parent loves the child. And you hug, uh, <laughs> and that child will never forget what you yelled at him. That child will never forget what you yelled at her. I remember counseling years ago, long gone. 
and a man and his son were in my office and he found out that his son might be homosexual. And he says, my whole life, I want a man, a boy like this. Oh, by the way, the, bo the son brought his friend. Hello. <laughs> I know the situation. The father doesn't know the situation. I want a man's man, boy. I want a boy. I want a boy like this, not like you. Look what God gave me, you. Now, later, he apologized to his son, and, and he's telling me this. I apologized, and I hugged him, and everything's okay. No, it's not. No, never. That boy will always remember. I wanted a son like him, but God gave me you. You'll never take words back. And so what about if you're reinforced in all these negative concepts or any of them? Then you have to overcome. Well, the idea of being transformed by the renewing of your mind is not only what others have told you, but what you have told yourself. What have you told yourself? How are you raised? Good parents, strong parents, directing parents? Thank God for them. Because how many have been shot down by a parent or shot down by a scout leader, or shot down by a school teacher, somebody in authority, somebody you respected. But then on the other hand, how many times the same people have encouraged you and that word of a good encouragement went right into you and you thought, that's right. You know, that, that, you know I, I see people that have been told, you're really funny. And, and they just, they are, they're just kind of naturally funny. And, and, and they'll say, I'm funny. Why? Because I was told I'm funny. And not only that, I make people laugh. And, and, and they know they're funny because somebody they respected told them they were funny. Or somebody that says, you know, you never give up. No matter how hard it gets, you're, just, you're a real fighter. And you see yourself as a fighter. Why? Because dad told me I'm a fighter. Because mom told me I'm a fighter. Because, and so all these qualities, see, there's the balance. Is can we get rid of the ugly and get rid of the trauma and be free in our mind for who we have been made by God? And so when God gives you all these glorious names and terms, he means that. And believe me, God is far above any dad. God is far above any mom or anybody else. In authority. God is the ultimate authority. And he says, I've made you in my image. I've created you in my image. I knew you before you were in the womb. I knew you. God knew you before you were you. Now think about that. And the God of creation, listen, doesn't make any mistakes. Remember the saying about a dozen years ago, God don't make junk. Remember that? It was, you know, it was on the bumper stickers. And people, none of you are junk. None of you. God made you. And so when we look in 2 Corinthians again, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Our nation was given to us because of God, and there is freedom. And we, all of us, who with unveiled faces... Otherwise, you don't have to hide your face from God. You can look in the mirror and say, God, good morning. I mean, how many of you talk to God when you, before your feet even hit the ground? I always talk to God before I feet. Hello, I'm alive. <laughs> it's another day. I thank God for a new day. I thank God for a good rest. I, have you ever thought about the miracle of how you're tired, you go to bed and you're regenerated and all of a sudden you're ready to go? How does that work? God made you so with unveiled faces you and god can look at each other how about when you're a child and your parent says look at me or how about when you say to your child look at me see that <laughs> okay don't look away don't look at the floor look at me you, you know that that little game you can look god right in the eye and say, God, thank you for making me. God, thank you for loving me. I love you. God, thank you. Unveiled faces, God is looking at you. All of us with unveiled faces all reflect the glory of God. And we're being transformed into his likeness, not what we've been told, bad, 
what we've been told good with everlasting glory which comes from the Lord. So, just as Jesus Christ died to set us free, many Americans, Jewish, African, Indian, Chinese, European, have died to keep America free. Really think about Memorial Day. I really enjoyed that picture of the eagle looking at the casket. Uh, and I don't know if it, any of you saw it. The casket with the flag over it, and there's a band around that flag. I mean, that's real stuff because that band holds that flag on. And the light, there it is. And you see that band right under the, during the middle stripe, the red stripe, and it goes all the way around the end. That's a real casket with real people, real soldier in there. And, and here's the eagle uh, representing America, bowing its head to this person that has given their life. Memorial Day means something and should always mean something. So many Americans, Jewish, African, Indian, Chinese, European, have died to keep America free. And all of us have loved ones that have died to keep America free. So people remember this. Don't let, you know, you hear all kinds, of, you hear real, so, you got to, you, you need to hear what you're, you need to hear what's being said. I was watching as I was looking up some of these quotes. There's these sneaky quotes. I love America, but I hate its government. Well, then you don't love America. The government is part of America. Good and bad. I can give you good and bad on both sides of the aisle and down the middle. It's people. There will always be good and bad. You're an American, and the American government has kept us free. And so... That's why around the world they want democracy. And who do they look for to have the example? America. They see that flag, they think liberty. They think freedom. They think elevation. They want that. They want America. So there's one God and one nation under God that we pledge our allegiance to. One God. That's Jesus Christ makes us Christians. And one nation, America that makes us American. So this morning, God bless America and God bless all of those people and their families that have given their lives to keep us free. Let's stand for prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for freedom. We thank you for loving us and blessing us with America. And God, we do. We pray for everyone who's lost a loved one no matter how far back or how recent, God, bless their families with your presence and your love and, and thank you for blessing us with America. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.
Hello, I'm Pastor Mark Ammerman, and I want to thank you for being with us today, and I certainly hope you are blessed. I want to invite you to live stream to the pastor's study on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, for a short message out of the Word of God, where God can lead you, guide you, comfort you, strengthen you in your life at this time. So again, thank you for being here, and I hope to see you Wednesday and Sundays.